Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottinen from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to take a look at images I recently shot at a wedding using the brand new Profoto A1 Lite. I'm going to leave all of my EXIF data on the top of the screen so you can see exactly what my settings were, but in a recent wedding, I used the Profoto A1 on my Nikon D750 to photograph this reception. And I just wanted to give you an idea of the quality of light coming out of this unit. And I should note that typically when I'm photographing a reception, I am using a Nikon SB900 on my camera and two flashes off camera all set to manual mode. But I wanted to test this light in a variety of different ways. Well, one was, could I get away with shooting a reception with just the Profoto A1 on camera? So that's what you're seeing here. I'm not using any off-camera lighting, and I specifically wanted to showcase the crazy lighting that the DJ had at this reception so you can see what it looked like. But I will say, I was very pleased with the performance. You'll notice I had low ceilings. Therefore, I was not bouncing this light. I was aiming it directly at the dance floor. And I was using the magnetic diffuser in order to soften the light a bit. I used it in both TTL and in manual mode, and it performed very, very well. I'm also really impressed with the battery life because I still had about two thirds left after shooting this reception. Now let's jump over to another wedding and specifically the formal images. Again, when I'm shooting my formal images, I am usually using one flash on camera and two off camera. In this case, it was just the Pro Photo A1 and it was aimed directly at them. Now I do wanna show you the before and the after. I just used the Suzy's Clean preset that's located on the Flourish Academy. I'll post the link below. But one thing I probably could have done better in this case was widen the beam of the Pro Photo a little bit. I was a little bit narrow. And what you can see is the, the gentleman on the outside edges are a little darker. And I had, to, I had to add some light to them just to make it look a little more balanced. Now, I took this one and I wanted to show you really close up what it would look like zoomed in. I was at 52 millimeters with the 24 to 70, and it is a little bit bright. I probably need to tone that down just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm leaving it bright for this video so that you can see the quality of the light and how natural and nice it looks. Now, I did miss on these wider shots having my two other flashes in order to sort of fill in the sides in the background a little bit more. But again, if I would have widened this beam, I think I would have done a little bit better. And then this is just one of the entrances into the reception. I kept this image in here because I wanted to show you that I did indeed have low white ceilings, but I opted to point the flash directly at them. Now this is something I would typically avoid like the plague when I'm using my SB900, but with the Profoto A1, I'm really enjoying the quality of the light. In conclusion, I would like to say that I do believe I could get away with shooting a wedding just with this light on and or off camera by itself. Ideally, I would have two of them. And in fact, that's probably what I'll purchase. But in these smaller venues, sometimes it doesn't even make sense to have multiple off-camera lights because I like the look of this image and I think that it works well with just the Pro Photo A1 on camera. I'm contemplating selling my two SB900s and my Canon 580EXs in order to just pick up two Pro Photo A1s because I feel like they would be a little more fluid and seamless to use rather than having a variety of triggers and pocket wizards and various stands. Although of course I would need a stand for the one off camera. But after shooting two weddings with this light, I will say this, my inclination is to pick it up and put it on my camera over and above my SB900s. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.